Hello, I'm Alison Markin Powell, a member and former co chair of the Penn Translation Committee. It is an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to the third and final event in this series of bilingual readings brought to you by the Penn Translation Committee as we celebrate Women in Translation Month. The first two events were hosted by the Jill Translation Reading Series, and recordings can be found on Jill's Facebook site, each with over 1,000 views already. We're grateful to Penn America for hosting today's event and also grateful to the three co-organizers of this month's events, Nancy Naomi Carlson, Anna Dinwoody, and Sandra Smith, as well as to Larissa Kaiser and Elizabeth Redfield of Jill for their generous support. And many thanks to our panelists today and to all of you for watching. Women in Translation Month is an initiative that was started in 2014 by the blogger Maytal Radzinski to address gender disparity in the field of translation. Women in Translation Month aims to highlight women and non-binary writers and translators whose recognition and representation in literary publishing is essential to freedom of expression. The past few months have been devastating across the world from the COVID-19 pandemic to ongoing police violence and mass protests. Forces of nationalism, greed, and bigotry are at work trying to divide us and to make us distrust one another. Reading translations in this context is more important than ever because translation allows us to connect across language barriers and to consider perspectives we might not otherwise have access to. A virtual platform allows us to reach more people than ever. And now I'm happy to introduce the moderator of today's event, Nancy Naomi Carlson. Nancy is twice an NEA grant recipient and the author of 10 books, including six translations. Her translation of Mauritian writer, Karl Tohabouli, Cargo Hold of Stars, Coolitude, is forthcoming from Siegel Books in January 2021. Her most recent book of poetry, An Infusion of Violets, also published by Siegel, was called New and Noteworthy by the New York Times. Thank you, Allison, for that lovely introduction, and I echo all of your thanks. I'm so happy to be moderating this one-of-a-kind event where we're presenting five translators and authors live from all over the world, including Hungary, Italy, Russia, Sri Lanka, Luxembourg, and Georgia, the country. The reading will be followed by a short Q&A session, time permitting, and if you would please hold your questions until after all the readings so that we can see them in the chat box. Chat box. Our first pair of readers will be translator Agnes Martin and author Zita Iso. Agnes Martin is a Hungarian-born poet, writer, librettist, fellow of the Royal Society of Arts in the UK, and reviews editor at the Ophi Press. Recent publications include her collection, Captain Fly's Bucket List, and four chapbooks with Moriah Books in the USA. She won the National Poetry Day competition in the UK. Zita Iso is a Hungarian poet and editor and the recipient of numerous awards and grants. She published her third poetry collection in 2018, whose title in English is Nighttime Landing. Welcome, Agnes and Zita. Thank you very much, Nancy, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. We are honored to be involved in this uh, wonderful event. We are reading two poems, a long one and a short one, first in Hungarian, then in English. Most of Zita's poems uh, deal with trauma and the possibility of uh, forgiveness. The first poem is called like mouse brooders. Zita. Hi everyone. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. It's so good to be here with you. <laughs> I, will, I will read the first poem. Ivadékaikat a bölcső szájú halak. Az egészből leginkább a hóra emlékszem. Könyököltünk a párkányon, és a végtelen fehérséget néztük. 
amikor ránk törték az ajtót a katonák. Arra még volt időm, hogy berángassam a hugomat a kamrába. Mi alatt ott rejtőztünk, minden lélegzetvétel úgy fájt, mint a puskák szuronyaival döfködnének. És attól féltem, a szurkálások helyén be lehet majd nyúlni a bordáim közé. Aztán mindennek vége lett. Megtalálnak minket, a hugom sikítani kezd. Én összeszorítom a szemem, hogy ne lássam, mit tesznek vele. Azt mondják, a legnagyobb szükségben halljuk meg az Isten szavát. De talán azért nem tudsz beszélni, mert nem a tenyeredem, hanem a szádban hordasz minket, Uram, mint ivadékaikat a bölcsőszájú halak. Kirángatnak a kertbe, szétveszítik a lábamat, hóval tömik be a szám, mert zavarja őket ez a furcsa, elnyújtott, magas sikítás, amiről én sem tudtam mindjárt, hogy belőlem jön. Azt hittem, megint beragadt egy oltalmat kereső rákcsáló a szigetelés és a tető közé, és annyiszor fut neki a faburkolatnak, még véresre nem veri a fejét, és ott nem marad. De amikor betömték a számat hóval, rájöttem, hogy belőlem jött az a hang. A hó szépen lassan olvad a számban, a leve lassan csurog le a torkomon. Pont olyan íze van, mint amikor a hugommal a hóesésben kinyújtottuk a nyelvünket. Pedig mióta elkezdődött a háború, semminek sincs ugyanolyan íze. Sem anyám levesének, sem a dédi sült almájának, sem a nagyanyám piskótájának. De a hó íze semmit sem változott. Anyám azt mondta, az Isten nem a szájában, hanem a tenyerén hord minket. Fekszem a hideg földön, és a te tenyered melegére gondolok, Uram. Miután végeznek, felállnak, de nem szólnak semmit. Mindegyik néma marad. A hegyek úgy fúródnak az égbe, mint ordítást elfolytó ember ajkaiba a foga. Thank you. Like mouse brooders. What I remember best is the snow. We were elbowing on the ledge, watching the never-ending white when the soldiers sprang the door. I barely had time to drag my little sister to the pantry. While hiding there, every breath hurt as if I were prodded with bayonets. I was scared it would become possible to reach into the gaps of my ribs at the jabbing spots. Then it finished, all of it. We are found. My sister starts screaming. I close my eyes so I can't see what happens to her. We are set to hear God's voice when we need it most. But you might not be able to talk, Lord, because you carry us not on your palm, but in your gob. 
like mouse brooders. I'm tumbled into the garden and my legs are strained apart. The cram snow amongst my lips. They can't stand my odd elongated squeal. I don't recognize it right then as mine. I think it's a helpless rodent stuck between the seal and the roof that locks himself into the wooden overlay as many times as it takes to smash his head and die. When they stuff snow in my mouth, I realize it's my voice from inside. The snow is melting in my mouth, nice and slow. It melts sullenly in my throat. It tastes exactly like when my sister and I shut out our tongues during snowfall. Though since the war started, nothing tastes the same. Mother's soup, Nana's baked apples, Nana's sponge cake. But the taste of snow stays the same. Mom said, God is not carrying us in his mouth, but on his palm. I'm lying on the ground. It's cold. Lord, I'm thinking of the warmth of your palm. When they finish, they stand up, mute, not a word. The mountains are piercing the sky like the teeth of someone dampening a hole. And the second poem is called New Hope. Az új remény. Tulajdonképp boldogok voltak, mert megengedték nekik, hogy három napra hazavigyék magukhoz a testet. Sétálni és játszótérre is menjenek. Családi fotókat készítsenek vele. Jó érzés volt látni az otthonukban. Lefektetni a neki berendezett szobában. Beszélni hozzá a baba kocsinál. Persze tudták, hogy majd vissza kell adniuk. Csak ebben a három napban lehetett az övék. Mégis jó volt, mert a közös múlt kitágult, mint az anya mély. Thank you. You hope. We can say they were happy. His body was allowed to be taken home for three days. They could go for a walk and to the playground, take family photos with him. It felt great to see him at theirs, to tuck him in, in the room meant to be his, to talk to him over the pram. They surely knew they would have to give him back he could belong to them only for these three days. It was nice though, their past with him dilated like the space before birth. Thank you. Thank you, Agnes and Zita. Our next pair of readers will be translator Olivia Sears, and author Mariangela Gualtieri. Translator Olivia E. Sears is founder of the Center for the Art of Translation and serves on the editorial board of Two Lines Press. Her translations of Mariangela Gualtieri 
have appeared in the Arkansas International and are forthcoming in Copper Nickel and The Common. Mariangela Gualtieri has published over a dozen collections of poetry and plays. As a dramaturg of the famed Teatro Valdoca, co-founded with Cesare Ronconi, she often bridges the two realms, cultivating the oral dimension of poetry and its communal collective roots. These poems originally appeared in her best-selling volume, Bestia di Gioia. Welcome, Olivia and Mariangela. Thank you so much to the Pen Translation Committee and um, to all the organizers for, for putting together this really tremendous collection of uh, readers and the whole series that's gone on this month. Um, we're gonna read three untitled poems today from Beast of Joy. And although the poems were published in Italy in 2010, they have tremendous relevance throughout the world today and especially in the United States in 2020. Um, we're going to read the poems in alternation. So uh, Mariangela will read the Italian first and then I'll read the English. Per tutte le costole bastonate e rotte. Per ogni animale sbalzato dal suo nido e infranto dal suo meccanismo d'amore. Per tutte le seti che non furono saziate fino alle labbra spaccate, alla caduta, all'abbaglio. Per i miei fratelli nelle tane, per le mie sorelle, nelle reti, nelle tele e nelle sprigionate fiamme, nelle capanne per le bambine mie strappate e per le perle nel fondarle marino, per l'inverno che mi piace e l'urlo della ragazza, quel suo tentare, la fuga in vano. Per tutto questo, conoscere e amare, eccomi. Per tutto penetrare e accogliere, eccomi. Per ondeggiare con tutto e forse cadere, Eccomi, che ognuno dei semi inghiottiti si farà in me fiore fino al meccanismo del frutto, che qualunque dolore verrà puntualmente cantato, e poi anche quella leggerezza di certe mani, di certe ore delicate, tutto sarà guardato mirabilmente, ascoltata ogni onda di suono penetrata nelle sue venature ogni canto, ogni pianto. Lo giuro adesso che tutto è impregnato di spazio siderale. Anche in questa brutta città appare chiaro, sopra i rumorosissimi bar, lo spettro luminoso della gioia. Questo lo giuro. For all the ribs battered and broken, for every animal hurled from its nest, its mechanism for love shattered, for all the thirst left unquenched until lips crack, until collapse, until the blazing failure, for my brothers in their dens and my sisters in their webs and in traps and amid the flames erupting and in their huts and bound and abused for the children torn from me and the pearls in the seabed for the winter I adore and for the girl's scream, her vain attempt to flee. For this, knowing and loving all this, I am here. To fathom and embrace all this, I am here. To float along with everything, perhaps to fall, I am here. So that every swallowed seed will flower in me until the fruit astonishes, I swear it. So that all suffering 
will be duly sung. And then also the lightness of certain hours, of certain delicate hands, all will be viewed with wonder. Every wave of sound heard, every song, every sob will penetrate the veins. I swear now everything is suffused with sidereal space. Even in this ugly city, the glowing specter of joy shines bright above the noisiest taverns. This, I swear. La capra sul fondo di me non vuole dormire. Cammina per i miei greppi, solleva quel buio e ne scopre ancora, più fondo. Al centro di me una bestiola accucciata si sveglia e respira il silenzio che nel giorno è mancato. Respira, a suo modo canta, resta attonita dentro, cucita nel fasciame del sangue, rivestita del buio notturno, palpitante, dei boschi, sanguinante, infante. La parte più viva sta sveglia e pilota. Solleva il corpo dal letto, lo accuccia nella camera accanto e canta dentro una felicità sconosciuta, un canto d'eternità spaventoso e immenso. È ignota la sua volontà, da che strana vita si erge quel suo stare sveglia, da che lontananza si accende. Non è bestia nera, ma piccola bestia di luce che sta nella vita un po' stretta per lei. The goat deep inside me doesn't want to sleep. She walks my barren bluffs, lifts that darkness and discovers still more there, deeper. At the center of me, a small curled up beast awakens and breathes the silence that by day was missing. Breathes, in her own way, sings. She's left stunned inside, stitched into my blood's cladding, clothed in the throbbing darkness of nighttime forests. Bleeding, infant. The part most alive stays awake and drives. She lifts the body from the bed, curls it up on the floor in the next room, and sings inside an unfamiliar happiness, a song of eternity, terrifying and immense. Her will is unknown. What strange life gives rise to the staying awake? From what distance is it ignited? She is not a dark beast, but a small beast of light who inhabits a life that for her is a bit too confined. Hanno detto che è stata una cometa che impattando col duro della terra ha portato l'acqua fra le pietre del nostro pianeta. Una cometa, hanno detto, un ghiaccio volante di luce, come scagliato da altre stelle fin qui. E dentro c'era la legge della specie, la formula del sangue, delle linfe, il timbro di ogni voce. L'acqua è la perfetta chiave che apre le forme scatenate. L'acqua che ancora beviamo è stata strascico di luce viaggiante bastimento abbagliante nel buio fra mondi. I'd like to dedicate this final translation to Susanna Cecchi, whose dazzling light remains among us. They said it was a comet striking the Earth's crust that brought water among the rocks of our planet. A comet, they said ice of light hurtling down as if 
flung here from other stars. And inside was the law of the species, the formula of blood and sap, the timber of every voice. Water is the perfect key to release the unbridled forms. The water we still drink is the legacy of traveling light, dazzling vessel in the darkness between worlds. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia and Mariangela. Our next pair of readers will be translator Rachel Daum and author Natalia Rubanova. Rachel Daum translates from Serbian, Russian, and German. She received her MA from Indiana University and her BA from the University of Rochester. She completed certificates in literary translation studies at both institutions. She lives in Cologne, Germany, as is the American Literary Translators Association's Communication and Awards Manager. Natalia Rubanova lives in Moscow, Russia. She originally studied piano and received her bachelor's from Moscow Pedagogical State University. She has published four books and her plays have been performed in Russia and most recently in London at the Solo International Festival where she was awarded the prize for best new writing. Welcome, Rachel and Natalia. Hello, thank you so much. Um, first, I just wanted to say uh, thank you so much to Nancy and, uh, and Sandra for organizing this reading and to Nancy and, for Al and to Allison for hosting. It's a really great honor to be here and sharing my Natalia's work in such awe inspiring company. Thank you. I just want to provide a little context since Natalia and I will be reading from the middle of the play. Uh, this is a one act thingamajig, which is still in, pro in progress and for the moment is titled Awesome. Uh, the Russian title is Zashi Beast, which has been a great challenge to translate. Um, it's a one man show featuring a nameless narrator typing letters to a robot called Werther, which is a clear reference to Goethe's The Sorrows of Young Werther. Uh, the man is recounting the women who have broken his heart and I want to give a slight warning that uh, it reads like a, a, a bit like a manifesto. Uh, there is offensive and potentially troubling language, but we do get to witness the narrator destroy himself throughout the course of the one act, spoiler, um, so he doesn't get away with it, which is nice. Um, Natalia is going to read letters four and five, and I will read four through seven. Natalia, Oh, Natalia, uh, Hello. Hello from Moscow. Uh, thank you for your invitation, America Pan, uh, Pan America, and Nancy Naomi Carlson. Uh, thank you for invitation. I hope our cooperation will be continue. And uh, my play is very relevant these days. Uh, the story is very um, indicative of modern people in Russia, Europe, and America, I think. Uh, thanks for the talented and beautiful, beautiful translation, Rachel Daum. <laughs> Reading? Elia. Начало я, Рэйчел? Да, да. Окей, сори. Окей, окей. Отрывок из монодрамы «Зашибись». Четвертое письмо роботу Вертеру. Проклятия повреждают генетический аппарат, обрекая существо на гибель. Я же тщетно пытаюсь понять процесс перехода от живой материи к костной и обратно. Разделение духовной субстанции и ее материального носителя называют смертью. Вертер, Вертер, если бы ты знал, о чем я мечтаю и что вижу во сне, проси как-нибудь, проси. Я с головой ушел в работу, а куда еще? Не обладая хоть сколько-нибудь высокими талантами, я 
делал сайты. За это не дурно платили. Как минимум пару раз в год я улетал куда-нибудь подальше. Компании не требовалось, а довольно сносный английский снимал много вопросов. Не могу сказать, какую именно страну я любил больше. Нет, не могу. Каждая по-своему прекрасна. Но вот Куба, да, пожалуй, Куба. Не Мексика, не Америка, не даже Перу. Нет, нет, Куба, Куба Либра, мать ее, совершенно гениальное место. Кто бы там что ни говорил. Роман с мулата Чина, М -м, сладкой мулаткой, не в счет. Прилетев, сдал анализы, пронесло. Я приходил в себя, перечитывал Эко, заново открывал Бес, листал Буковский, Миллера. Я слушал музыку, Китаро, Корунеш, Гарбарик, Ваклавик. Я пересмотрел, наверное, всего Хичкока, хотя никогда не был увлечен им особенно сильно. Однако именно в фильмах Хичкока таилось противоядие. В нем, как ни странно, не было боли. Я не хотел, вовсе не хотел больше того, что называют ха-ха, серьезными отношениями. Я не верил в них, просто больше не верил. И тут как на грех, понимаешь, Вертер, как на грех на сцену выходит Мара. Пятое письмо роботу Вертеру. Ты спрашиваешь, о чем я мечтаю? Отвечаю. Мне бы хотелось функционировать, как функционирует безграничное поле сознания. Да-да, это правда. Можно ли желать большего? Напряжение, возникающее между болью и удовольствием, есть творчество. Смерть, как отточие жизни, есть творчество. Это так же верно, как и то, что вне пределов земной атмосферы небо всегда черное, закрытое на щеколду слов вечность, мертвого, григорианского, хоралла. Спасибо, Наталья. The fourth letter to worry about Werther. Curses cripple the genetic apparatus, dooming the being to death. I'm trying in vain to grasp the process of progress for matter living to inert and back. The separation of spiritual substance from its material medium is called death. Werther, Werther, if only you knew what I dream of and what I see in my sleep. Ask me sometime, ask me. I plunged headfirst into work, what else? Not possessing any higher talents, I made websites. The pay isn't half bad. At least a few times a year I flew somewhere far away. I didn't need to use a company to book and passing English took care of most questions. I can't say which one country I liked best. No, they all have their own, ah, uh, you know, so on and so on, but Cuba. Yes, probably Cuba. Not Mexico, not America, not even Peru. No, no, Cuba, Cuba Libre, hot damn. A perfect place no matter what they say. Do flings with locals count? I got tested when I came back, all clean. I came to my senses. I read Echo, opened up Hesse again, leafed through Bukowski and Miller with a beer in hand. I collected records, Kitaro and Karunesh, Garbaric and Baklavik. For some contrast, probably, I rewatched all of Hitchcock, though I'd never been particularly drawn to his work. But in it, an antidote lurked. In it, strange, there was no pain. I didn't want, I, I didn't want any more of that, what we call serious relationships. I didn't believe in them, not anymore. And then there, like a sin, do you understand, Werther, like a sin, Mara enters the scene. Fifth letter to Robot Werther. You ask what I dream about, I'll tell you. I wanted to function like a limitless field of consciousness functions. Yes, yes, that's right. Can you want anything more? Tension arising between pain and pleasure, there is creation. Death, like an outpouring of life, there is creation. It is as true as what lies outside the bounds of the Earth's atmosphere. The sky is always black. Infinity closed on the latch of words, cantus firmus of the Gregorian chant. Anyway, Mara. Maybe I'll even try to describe her. Five foot six, a brunette with a classic bob, nary a flea nor flaw. Those huge eyes so easy to drown in. They changed color with her mood, but usually they seem dark blue. No false lenses, that was their real color. She had clear matte skin. I don't know if this virtue was from any special treatment. I don't, I don't know. 
Slender, but not skinny fingers, just right. The manicure always pristine. The nails, it's true, were, it seemed to me, a little too long to be able to hold her hand. They're fine for using a mouse and a keyboard, she laughed, scraping my heart. I can't love not the ones anymore, and they're not the ones, always not the ones. Mara also turned out to be not the one, maybe the very last not the one, but she was always honest, always. I mean, she only spoke of a complete lack of feelings, but at the same time, she didn't let go, never let go of me till the end. The whole thing was complicated. I was already divorced, Mara wasn't yet. The only thing linking her to her husband was a child, a son, a boy of about 10, I saw. Mara hadn't slept with her husband in a long time, preferred to do that with people she did not have tender affection for, and of course, with those she who didn't love her in return, such masochism. So there was no way I could end up in Mara's bed. Despite it all, we spent one night together. Conduct played no small part. That's all. You know, this doesn't change anything. Mara, in the morning, pulling up her skirt. The sixth letter to Robot Werther. And these freaks, Werther, listen, these freaks think that freedom of information poses a threat. A regional survey, 58% are pro-censorship, 26% strongly agree, 24% of the respondents were anti, 8% were strongly against, 18% found the question too difficult to answer. Of course, they found it too difficult to answer. They can't do anything at all, just gawk, gawk into the box, void themselves, producing little bastards or copies of themselves, a second shift, meat from meat. It seems to me whether it's about time to blow this planet to kingdom come. They tell me if they've killed in past lives, it means they'll watch a thriller in this one, indicating evolution. What's more, if they were illiterate in those lives but read tabloids now, they're already evolving. If you spit from that steeple, then dames with detectives and old scandal mongers by the door and thieving concierges and airheaded salesgirls and putrid butchers and workers in Bavarium's specialists and lawmakers specialists and copulators with goats, horsemen and drinkers of themselves to death, horsemen are evolving. Anamnesis morbi, a hatchet into the heart, a rusty hatchet, nothing elitist, a functional thingamajig. Werther, Werther, it's not that I'll never love them. Werther, Werther, if only I had a gun, I'd start with these Vivarium specialists. The seventh letter to Robot Werther. I was afraid of one, do you know, devilishly afraid, of hearing my beloved in a different key. Oh, not that one, not that key. That would be the lid for me, Werther, the lid of the piano. A major and B minor, a monstrous mix. You're old fashioned, my beloved says. Let, let her say what she wants. Let her just speak. I like the sounds of her voice. They're like birds released from a cage. She is a bird, Werther, but I never, you never understand. I can never touch her wings. There is pollen upon them like a butterfly. How it should have gone, these lines look at themselves in the body of the letter. Fly, fly off, hurry away, a cord for falling out of love to the glacial bald mountains, to the iron copper mountains, be their mistress. You modulated, you just modulated to the wrong key. Goodbye. Shoot right into the hearts of Mara and Kay. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, and thank you, Natalia. Our fourth pair of readers will be translator Chamini Kulathonga and author Tilini Nianarachi. Chamini is a Siri, Sri Lankan translator. She's a graduate of the Iowa Translation Workshop and a 2019 Summer Visiting Fellow at Cornell University's South Asia Program. Chamini was the former blog editor at Exchanges. Her work has appeared in World Literature Today, the Los Angeles Review of Books, the Los Angeles Review, and elsewhere. Tilini Lianarachi is a Sri Lankan poet. Her debut poetry collection, titled Unrequited Love in English, was published in March 2020. 
Her Facebook page, Unwritten Poem, was one of the first literary pages in Sri Lanka to reach 100,000 followers. Liana Rachi's poetry explores topics such as human connections, cultural restrictions, and class disparity. Welcome, Chamini and Tilini. Hi, everyone. Tilini and I are thrilled to be a part of this event today, reading alongside these amazing translators and their authors. We are especially thankful to Pan America and the organizers of this event for giving visibility to a minority South Asian literature like ours. The poems we are going to read today are from Thelini's debut poetry collection titled Aprakashita Premier, The Unrequited Love, which will be launched a week from today in Sri Lanka. I picked these four poems hoping that they would be a representative sample of Thelini's work in terms of the themes that she usually explores. The first poem is addressed to the first female ruler in ancient Sri Lanka, Queen Anula. Uh, the history books suggest that she was a uh, promiscuous woman who poisoned several of her husbands, uh, but rarely anything about her as a ruler. So in the poem, Thelini questions the historical accuracy of these facts. Uh, and the other three poems explore human connections from the point of view of a daughter and a lover. The last poem of the selection, uh, An Abbreviated Love, describes a woman's feelings for her beloved using unconventional metaphors found in Sinhalese women's writing, specifically from substance intoxication, a culturally restricted domain for South Asian women. Uh, and some of these poems are forthcoming in Project Puyum at the end of this month. Uh, so yeah, Thelini, would you like to get us started? Hi, hello. Thank you everyone for this chance. And here we go. Rajinak Pema Papayak. Anta Purahimi Rajun Hatavanda Itihasa Pot Perala Perala Unma Hayin Hina Uva Obasaragi Liaki Kela. When the Pirimin Tavasagane Dunne Vasamada Nat the Kiela Ekama Sarea at the Kiela Yan Nevad Regina Hanula Unta Tahanam known is Selema Pirimi Nakataka Upan Hindad Nam Nodana Gehenu Malkimi Siak the Hasak Hemak Bendad Pin Tiene Selemetavage Apima Ratheater Rakaran Nether Ehe un Umbagana Kiane Itihase e Haumakan Nether Make a Himata Rata Regina Pima Mahaluku Papea Kuna Gani Ihaleta Giot E Kage Hari Lingayaki Ek Una Carta Natuat Itene Vamata Ahan Netumbe Kata Hukuma Umbat Umbehita Misaka Dani Kauda Mevae at the Nettam. Thank you. To be a queen is a sin. When arraying the kings with concubines, turning the pages of history books, they laughed at you, saying, She's an erotic being. Could you come back once more, dear Queen Anula, to tell us if you really poisoned every man you married? Was it their masculine auspices that allowed them to be at play? Was in love with them? They say being a man is a marriage. Was it why copulation only their right? Was it why they pointed at you? Was it to erase their sins from history? In a country like this, being a queen itself is a sin. And once a woman climbs the ladder, she's but a genital that unites with another. I wish I could listen to all your stories for it's you who knows the truth of them all. Thank 
කාලයට අපි නවතින්න කියමුද අම්මා දැන් කතා කරන්නේ හෙමින් හුස්ම ගන්නේ නැවතිල්ලේය දොස් නගන්නේ නැති තරම් උයන්නේ එකම කෑම දෙක තුනේ කන්නේ බත් කට දෙකකින් බොහෝ වේලාවට කල්පනා කරමින්ය අම්මේ අපි මෙහෙම මෙතනම නැවතීමුද කාලයට නවතින්නේ කියා අපි ළඟ අපි අපිව බදාගෙන හිමුද Shall we ask time to stop? Mother speaks slowly now, breathes tranquilly, hardly ever nags, cooks the same curries, only eats a handful, often lost in thought. Mom, shall we stop here, here at this very moment, and ask time to stop with us? so we can remain nestled in each other. Amana Asamana Katandar Amme Adha Vahine Va Kolambeta Vahine Kottu Me Vage Inda Hita Yaluo Pani Neva Midulata ආ සයිලු උන් මෙහෙම වැස්සට දෙමෙන එක හරි පන්ලු ඇත්තට කළු අලාවන් සෙයිල මෙන්දුර සකුණු අහසේ කෙනෙන හැම විට මට බයයි වහිනවද ඕ සිට කියා මං නැති සමේ පොළවට මගේ හිත වගේ මැටි බිත්ති වල අප්පච්චි වගේ හයිය ඇති තව දෙහි බින්දු තව දරා ගන්නට කියා සනසා ගනිමි හිත තව පුංචි කාලේ මහා වැස්සට එමෙන ගෙබිමේ අයිනේ අස්සක නුඹ චීත්තේ යටට ගොලි වුණ මම තවම නෑ ආස වැස්සට Thank you Even and even stories Mother, it's raining in Colombo today. During these occasional rains, my friends here jump outside. They say they love it. They say it's fun to get wet in rains like these. But every time I see a dark cloud hovering in the distant southern skies, I'm scared the heavy rains might torment the earth of the village i won't be the mud clay walls are as the mud clay walls are like my heart now they are only as strong as father i send them a silent prayer asking to hold on a little longer to stay strong against the raindrops as a child who huddled inside a rag during heavy rains like this in a corner of our wet floor i still can't seem to like the rain matri me preme umba antimama danhil pugura palavenima beera එන බුබුල සෝස්තියක මැද හරියේ සුවඳ පරත්තපු මත් වීමේ නිවන Thank you and this is the last poem Inebriated Love You are the last puff of a downhill smoke the first foaming beer bubble the nirvana of inebriation conquering the smell of a half burnt spliff thank you very much thank you chamini and tilini our final pair of readers will be translator ralph hubble 
and author Nazla Karibiyikalu. Ralph Hubble holds an MFA in creative writing from the Johns Hopkins University. His fiction, essays, and translations have appeared in The Sun Magazine, Words Without Borders, Asymptote, Tin Houses Lost and Found, and elsewhere. He lives in Baltimore, Maryland, and is currently working on a translation of the short stories of Ouz Atai. Nazla Karabiriklu is an author from Turkey, now a full-time resident in Georgia, the country, who secluded herself from the political and gender oppression in Turkey. She was awarded with the Writer at Residence Program in Prague by UNESCO City of Literature 2020 and the Writers in Exile Scholarship by Penn Germany for 2021 to 2022. Welcome, Ralph and Nasla. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you to uh, Penn America and, um, and thank you to all writers and translators for producing great work and, and thank you to the attendees as well. Um, so just to give a, a little bit of context real quick uh, to this work, it's, it's sort of an excerpt from an excerpt. Um, and uh, it's, it's from a, a novel that Nozla is currently working on, uh, which is <clears throat> uh, meant to be a, um, a politically grounded LGBTQ plus work um, that is um, sort of trying to move away from portraying um, uh, gay relationships uh, and, and the way they've sort of been romanticized in, in a lot of Turkish literature in the past. Um, the, uh, the, the excerpt we're going to read um, from, it's the third part uh, to this, um, this, this sort of situation where there's this a, a young woman uh, named Elfie and um, uh, she, she is, she's gay, she hasn't come out uh, to her, uh, to, to really anyone and um, uh, her, her parents sort of suspect though um, uh, that she is gay and so they um, uh, they take her to a, a Muslim exorcist um, so in a, in a nod I guess to, to Mike Pence it's sort of the, the Muslim version of pray away the gay <laughs> and so um, how to kind of look at it um, and it's, it's quite a harrowing experience for her uh, as you'll see um, and I'll just also say before I hand it over to Nelson that it's, it's not lost on me sort of the irony of of being um, a straight male um, uh, translating a, a queer writer. But I think that's uh, one of the great things about translation is it, it creates these really interesting uh, pairings. So we're just gonna, we're gonna run with it. Um, so I'll hand it over to Nazla to, to read the Turkish. You gotta uh, unmute yourself though. Hi everybody. Uh, it's nice to see you here today. So, uh... As Ralph told you before, I will um, read an excerpt from my novel LPA. So I will read the third part in Turkish and hope you enjoy it. Çok geçmedi. İçimdeki sapık duyguları sorgulaması için Cinci Hoca'ya götürüldüm. Yere koyduğum minderin üzerime oturmamı söyledi. Oturdum. Bağdaş kurdum. Arkama geçti. Dizlerin üzerine çömerdi. İki omzumu da iki eliyle tuttu. Abdest aldırdın mı diye sordu. Elideki sedirde oturan üreğimi aldırdım. Eyuzu billahimle şeydanir acıyım. Gözlerini kapat ve sakın. Ne olursa olsun açma dedi hoca. Başımı salladım. La havle ve la kuvvete illa bila ilali ilazim. Omuzlarımı öyle sıkı tuttu. Enseme öklemeye başladı. Hazreti Süleyman'ın mührüyle, Hızır Aleyhisselam'ın izniyle toplanın. Aynı ritimde arkamdaki kadınla beraber ön arkaya sallanıyorduk. Korkunç biri değil de, hatta çok gençti. Tülbentinden hoş bir koku yükseliyordu. Elleri küçük ve soğuktu. Kazağımın üzerinden etime geçen öperiş. Toplanın çabuk diye bağırdı. Biraz daha hızlı sallıyordu şimdi beni. Hadi hepiniz, hepiniz acelemiz vardı demek ki. Kızıyordu seslendiklerine. İsmi güldü. Nefesi öyle kuvvetliydi ki derman olmadığı hiçbir dert yoktu. Öyle söylemişlerdi bize. Ye saf değiş derken eliyle ensemi kavradı. Bir katlama değiş sağ kulağıma tekrar ye saf değiş sol kulağıma durduk. 
kıpırtısız, eliyle kafamı bastırdı, çenemi göğsüme yapıştırdı iyice. Ya bir sel esti ya da o başımı üfledi. Sessizce durduk. Arkamda başım sallıyordu, ne yapıyordu? Eli ensemde, eli başımda, saçımda eşyaların odadaki bir koru sedirle 30 avatı te- ekran, televizyon, havada döndüğünü hissediyordum. Ve aleyküm selam diye çığırdı Gül Hoca. Gelmişlerdi demek, bizi çevirmişlerdi. İçimdeki her şeyi okuyabileceklerdi. Ne kadar nefret ettiğimi yüreğimden ve hiç sevmediğimi babamı, sürekli orama dokunduğumu ve aklımın orada durduğunu, sakladığımı kalemlerimi, sonra kaybettim dediğimi, kırıp döktüğüm ne varsa hepsi döndüler, dolaştılar ve etrafımda dolan, toplandılar. Çıkarın emrini verdi ardımdaki neyi? Çıkarın çabuk. Kollarımı iki yanına açtı, yere paralel durdu. İkisini alın, hepsini içinden. Çıkarın, çıkarın, çıkarın. Ötede üveyimin nefessiz izlediğini hissediyordum. Ne çıkaracağım? Aniden biriyle ağzımı açtı. Çenemi iyice aşığı bastırdı. Aç Elfiye dedi. İyice aç ağzım. Gözüm sımsıkı kapalı. Çenemi kapatasımdan koparıracağım. Açtım ağzımı. Madem çıksın ne iblisse içimdeki. Kopar, kopar, kopal. Al hepsini. Sen, sen. Sen al gerisini. Sürekli bir emir döngüsü. Ağzım kuruyordu. Kalbim de telaşlanmıştı şimdi. Ne olacak? Ruhlarla periler mi geldi? Halbuki hiç kara konculos masalı anlatılmadıydı bana. Lut kavminin lanetinden sana sınır, sığınırız ya Rabbim. Amin dedi üvey. Cinsini şaşmışlarsan sana sığınırız ya Rabbim. Amin. Gerçekten de sen erkekleri bırakıp şehvetle kadınlara yaklaşıyorsun. Doğrusu sen azgın kavimden kılınmışsın. Tövbe de. Tövbe, tövbe de, tövbe. Hazreti Lut'un asası Yunus'un hükmüyle Bismillahirrahmanirrahim deyip elini midime dek soktu, tuttu ve çıkardı. Sapkın ve azgın olan ne varsa, kusturum, kahvaltıdan kalmış ne varsa, çıkardım reçelli ekmek, domatesli omlet, kustukça coştum ve daha büyük övürdüm. Sırtımı sert tekmeyle vurdu, kökünü kazıyın diye emretti cinlerine ve bana. Kus dedi. Kus, kus, safra edek, tövbe et, tövbe de. Alın tutun bunu, neyi varsa alın. Kazı en kökünden imanı, kirleten pislikleri. Döktüm, bıraktım, elinin tadı ağzına yapıştı. Daha fazla övürdüm ve ağladım. Eyozu billahimle şeyden racim, gözlerimi açtım. Kalbim duracaktı. Ayakları ter, ters dönmüş, kafası küçük, gövdesi ışıktan cinler, melaikeler, periler ve leşiler görmeyi beklerken tek gerçek dizlerimin dibine çıkardıklarımdı. Yemek borumdan mideme inen yanıktı. Tamam dedi üveyime dönüp Gül Hoca. Cinsi sapık girmiş zavallıya. Bundan böyle adetine dek her gece 21 besmele çeksin. Adet olunca 666 kere çekecek. Gusurdan sonra da namazını kılsın. Kaç banknotlu sayamadım elden ele geçen. Tülbentini düzeltirken içeriden küçük bir kız geldi. Pisliğimi temizlemeye elinde kovayla. Aman ha diye tembihledi hoca arkamızdan. Bir daha musallat olursa bu illet yakma seansı yapmamız gerekecek. Sakın geç kalma. Elfiye rutubet kokulu apartmandan çıkarken Çocukluğunu kustuğu zeminde bıraktım. Çünkü Elfiye cin geçirmez, sapa sağlam bir kızdı. Thank you. So Ralph, it's on you. Alright. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Not long after this, my stepmother took me to a hoja who performed exorcisms to interrogate the perverted sensibilities inside me. The hoja told me to sit on a cushion on the floor and I crossed my legs. She slipped behind me, crouched to her knees and held my shoulders with her two hands. You made sure she washed herself, she asked my stepmother. We sat on the divan behind her. I did. Audu bilahi mina shaitani rajim. Relax, close your eyes and whatever happens, don't open them, the hoja said. I nodded. La haula walla kuwatta ila bilahi aliyum azim. She held my shoulders so tight and blew on my neck. Gather now, by the seal of the Prophet Suleiman, by the will of his peace be upon him. Come, 
Kneeling behind me, she rocked us together to the same rhythm, back and forth. She wasn't so awful, actually. She was even young, a pleasant scent rising from her muslin headscarf, her hands small and cool, a chill passing through my sweater to my flesh. Gather yourselves, quick, she shouted, and she began to rock me faster. Let's go, all of you, every one of you. We must have been in a hurry, because she sounded angry, this woman named Gu, about whom we were told there was no sickness or forceful breath couldn't cure. Ye, sa, dish, she said, and clutched the nape of my neck, then into my right ear, bikap lama dish, and again into my left ear, ye, sa, dish. Then we stood motionless until she pressed down on the back of my head and jammed my chin straight into my chest. I don't know if a breeze swept through or if she'd begun to blow on my head, but we stood there silently. What she was doing behind me, I couldn't tell, nodding, I guess, one hand on my neck, the other on my head, and it felt like the bare divan and the old RCA TV and everything else in the room was whirling around through my hair. Then Guho just shouted, Wa alaikum salam. Her jinns must have arrived, had encircled us, and they would soon pour over all the things I kept inside me. How much I hated my stepmother and how little I loved my father. How often I touched myself and what I thought about when I did. That I hid my pens but claimed I'd lost them. What I dropped, what I'd broken, all of it returned to me, revolved around the room and gathered itself at my knees. Get it out, she commanded them from behind me. But what? Get it out, now. And she spread my arms to the side and held them parallel to the floor. Take it out of her, all of it. Get it out, get it out, get it out. I could see, I could feel my stepmother watching breathlessly nearby. What was I supposed to get out? Suddenly a hand opened my mouth and pulled down on my chin, hard. Open up, Elfie, she said, open your mouth. I clenched my eyes tighter and opened my mouth so wide I thought my jaw would detach itself from my skull, seeing that a demon lived inside me and it had to come out. Tear it up, tear it up, tear it up. You, you, and you, keep what's left. This constant gyre of orders, my mouth was going dry, my heart was rattling, and so then, the spirits and the fairies had finally shown up. Ah, and I still hadn't been told the ancient legend of the Cartaconjuros. In you, O oh God, we seek refuge from the scourge of Lot's people. Amin, my stepmother said. In you, O oh God, we seek refuge from sexual confusion. Amin, do you dare commit abominations such as no creature ever did before you? Say that you repent. I repent. You really have given up on men, and now you're lustfully inching closer to women. It's true. You're the descendant of a lecherous people. By the rod of the prophet Lot and the seal of the prophet Jonah, Bismillahi Ramahi Rahim. And she plunged her hand all the way into my stomach, grabbed whatever perverse and lecherous thing lurked down there, and pulled it out. Make yourself vomit. I forced up what was left of my breakfast, the bread and jam, tomato omelet. The more I vomited, the more I let myself go, heaving harder. She kicked me in the back. Tear it up by the roots, she ordered me and her gins. Throw it up, she said, up, up, up, until there's nothing but bile. Repent, say that you repent. Take hold of the filth that soiled her faith and tear it up by the roots. I let it pour out of me, the taste of her hand still on my lips. I heaved and gagged and started to cry. Then, in a single breath, she told me three times to pick it up and pulled me back and pressed my head to her chest. Gather it up. Don't leave it behind. Take it and go. And whatever it was that had come out of LFA, the gins would carry away. I opened my eyes. My heart had nearly stopped. I was expecting to see angels, fairies, and leshies, or gins with backward, twisted feet, tiny heads, and torsos made of light. But the only tangible thing was what I'd brought up from my stomach and the burning feeling running down my throat. Barakallahu minkum valaikum, Godspeed, Guhoja said, and she blew her gin friends back to where they'd come from. That should do it, she turned to my stepmother. The poor thing was possessed by a perverted gin. She needs to say 20 basmalas every night until her period. And when she's menstruating, she does it 666 times. And she prays after a full ablution. I tried to count the banknotes that passed between them, but I couldn't. As Gu Hoja fixed her head scarf, a young girl came from the back room with the bucket, apparently to clean up my mess. But keep an eye on her, Gu Hoja stood behind me, cautioning my mother. If the issue gets worrisome again, we'll have to do a seance with fire, so bring her back right away. Elfie walked out of the damp, foul-smelling building and left her childhood with her vomit on the floor because she was an iron-hard girl no gin could ever possess.
Thank you. Thank you, Ralph and Nasla. What a treat to hear these stunning voices in Hungarian and Russian and Sinhalese and Turkish and Italian. So a huge thank you to all of our readers. It looks like we have a, a few minutes for some questions. If you've got questions, now is the time to type them in into the chat box. And um, I'll start you off with um, translators. Can you describe your process of translation with your authors? Just jump in and unmute yourself. Uh, I'll start. Um, I have been uh, corresponding with uh, Maria Angela for many months now and um, sending her uh, my trans and then we'll discuss or if I have a particular question um, about a word and what precisely she was thinking of when she used the word. Um, I'll ask those questions and then she um, will respond and she always says uh, that her English isn't good enough and she leaves it up to me, which is the sign of a, a wonderful collaborator, um, but she'll also share with me any, uh, she so sometimes says she has a piccoli dubbi, little doubts about uh, particularly uh, the, how common a word is. And she'll maybe want a word that's slightly less common um, so that the tone will be a little more surprising. Um, and it's been an incredibly gratifying process and we only met yesterday over Zoom. So I'm grateful to all of you for bringing us together since I was unable to go to Italy and meet her myself in person. Yeah, I was gonna say oh, that sounds, I'm sorry, Rachel, you go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead, Ralph, you started talking already. Well, I, I was just going to say that sounds really similar to mine in, in Alice's process. She once said to me, I was asking her all these questions and, um, and she said, well, hey, it's your art, you know, and um, that was like a really, really freeing um, uh, thing to hear. But uh, just as Olivia said, I'm also um, you know, getting in touch with her about, you know, tone and, um, you know, how common a word is. Um, and uh, we usually just on WhatsApp, just fire questions back and forth with one another. Um, and, you know, that seems to, to suffice. Yeah. Rachel? Yeah, it's, um, my Natalia's process is pretty similar where um, she'll send me some texts and I'm able to kind of select what I am interested in, in doing like this go round. I'll do a couple of drafts by myself until I'm able to like tease out what are the really naughty questions because um, Natalia's prose is uh, she's, as we mentioned in the bio, Natalia is a trained pianist, so her, her prose is very musical, um, but she also strikes really purposeful dissonance, and that's something that I sometimes struggle with in translation. So I, in speaking with her, um, she's been good about letting me know, like really listen to the, the tone, listen to the tempo, um, and just, she really trusts me with it, which has been really lovely. And when things get difficult, we send each other memes of our cats. It's, that's pretty great. Well, in my case, uh, working with Tilini is very easy. Uh, she's very helpful uh, with my queries to her. She would respond uh, within a matter of minutes. That is like, of course, if she's not uh, asleep in Sri Lankan time. Uh, I uh, corresponded back uh, with Tilani, uh, especially uh, when I was translating the first poem that I read, uh, the, uh, To Be a Queen is a, sweet, is a Sin. Uh, initially, like uh, the poem is uh, very much uh, situated within uh, the Sri Lankan history, uh, which I'm not uh, good at for the most part. So I initially mistook the character for a character in the Ramana story, and then I sent her a um, a Facebook message and then she called me back and like she explained me uh, everything that was like that went into the poem. So it, it, it was a, a very helpful uh, collaborative process. 
uh, and something I love about almost all the authors that I'm currently working with is that uh, they have faith in me and my craft as a translator as much as I have faith in them and their work. So it's, it's easy and enjoyable uh, to work when both parties have faith in themselves. And uh, for the most part, everything else becomes uh, a matter of effective communication, I think. I would like to compare the process uh, of uh, translating Zita's poems and uh, the process where my own poems are translated in, into uh, other languages. Um, the process is so very different because uh, our, the nature of our poems is very different. So when my own poems are translated, first, uh, quite often I have to explain the multi-layered nature of the poems because it happened quite often that only the first layer of the poems was translated and uh, then I had to explain, okay, uh, that's the kind of story a layer, but uh, uh, there are other hints and uh, also uh, the music of the poem uh, has to be there and uh, the language play. Now then, when I translate Zita's poems, uh, the sentences are seemingly easy. Uh, the language seems to be quite understandable uh, for the first read. So first, I don't have questions because I understand uh, everything, but uh, it is only seemingly easy. It's very easy for a first draft, but then to give back uh, the kind of sacred uh, nature of the poem is very tricky. Uh, when I do that, so when I have the kind of sophisticated version, uh, I send it to Zita uh, with my uh, explanation what I had to change what is different in the original and uh, in the English version, uh, because uh, these two languages are very, very different. And then uh, sometimes for certain things, I have more versions when it's kind of all the same, which version could be there. And I ask Zita of which one uh, she prefers, but uh, of course, then I decide for the final version. Thanks. So it looks like we've got two more minutes and we have two quick questions that I saw in the question chat box. For Nasla, when will your novel be out and published? You'll have to unmute yourself. Sure. Hi. Um, thank you for the question. Um, I think the novel will be uh, ready to publish uh, like on December. And uh, I have to ask this question to my agent, <laughs> uh, Mina. So we are working together and I left all the rights to the rights of the novel to Mina. So I'm not really sure about it, but uh, I suppose that it will be published next year or the year after. Thank you. And our last question is for Agnes and Zita. What are the exact titles in English of the two poems? They were very powerful and moving. The first one is called Like Mouse Brothers. It was published uh, in uh, the literary magazine uh, Van Hand Clapping. And the second one is called uh, New Hope. It was published in the Offi Press. Thank you. So it looks like we are out of time. Once again, thank you so much to the Pen Translation Committee, to my co-organizers, Anna Dinwoody and Sandra Smith, to Allison Markin Powell, to our hosts, Pen America and the Pen Translation Committee, and to the readers. And most importantly, thank you to the members of the audience for joining us today. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.